certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. I'm going to 
God's faithfulness to us. We seek it for prayer. Most gracious and ever loving God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement. Pray that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace. So that even as we mourn the death of one who we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and in your mercy. Assure us, O Lord, O Lord, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. May our hearts be so composed to the Holy Spirit that all care and bitterness may be swallowed up with the light and peace you give to your brothers and children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A light and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, who have given us the pledge of eternal life. Please thus we pray above all present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are met in this solemn moment to commend Beverly Clinton Morgan into the hands of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed, and in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us then recall to mind the life of our dear sister, in humble trust, hear the words of Holy Scripture. We we'll have first the remembrance by Brian Forsyth, and then the tributes as listed in the program. Brian. Let us worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us lift songs and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory, great things He has done. I greet you all this morning in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Lord and our soon coming King. Amen. Amen. Sister. I do not have words to express. You know, the sister, my sister, Diana, as she was officially known as, is, was a wonderful sister. And I just sum up some words just to describe her. The first essence sister represents sin. The I represent inspir inspiring. The S represents sincere. The T trustworthy. And E encouragement. And the R respectful. Those are some of the words that I, you know, just put together to remember my sister. I can recall, and it's so fitting for her to be lying in this casket, in this Methodist church at this time. Because when we were little siblings growing up, the Methodist church was the first church that we attended. And for many of you young ones who do not know, that was when it was up by the corner there. And every Sunday, every Sunday, our neighbor, Jolly, would, you know, see to that, that Diana is ready to go to church. And then her brother, Glenn, Shaggy, would see to that, he would be taking me. So she started out in the Methodist church. Amen? And 
As time goes by and we begin to grow together, I can remember vividly when my father passed away from when I was eight years old. And it was her father and then my other sister, Carol, who, God bless their father, who took care of me at that time. And I can remember we used to go to St. Anne's Bay every Saturday morning, our mother would send us to collect the money so that she could get it to prepare and provide something for us. As we grew up, I cannot remember at no time, I cannot recall at no time where me and Diana ever fight. I cannot remember. I don't know if any of our neighbors who are here, if they can remember, or my sister Sharon, if she can remember, but I cannot remember. But she used to be a referee between me and my brother, Clifford Smith, a.k.a. Soji. When our old Cliffian beat him, you know, for the wrongs that he did, after letting go Soji, you'd run and say, I'll kill you now, I'll kill you now. And it was Diana who used to be the referee for us. Amen? Amen. And as we grow, she continued to be a wonderful, blessed sister that she, you know, is to the present time when she died. And the good thing about it is that after some years, she gave her life to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let us lift hands and worship the Lord. She gave her life to the Lord. And today, I think her greatest wish or blessing for all of us who have not yet accepted the Lord as our personal and Savior is to give our life to the Lord. Jesus said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Today we are, we miss our sister, we miss our friend, we miss our mother. And this part of it would almost slip me that Diana used to be the mother for my first son, that's Brian, Ricardo Forsyth. He's on his way here, I don't think he'll reach us yet. But from two years old, Diana has been a mother for him as well. And, you know, she has instilled in him the discipline and the way that a young man should go. And today I'm grateful for the way she inspired him, encouraged him, motivated him, that today I can say, you are a wonderful son, Ricardo. Praise the Lord. So let us start. Go about being sad. Yes, we are human and we know we lost our loved ones. But the best thing that we could ever do today is to give our life to the Lord, that we will meet her someday in glory land. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.
says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Sister Edward Newton Morgan, also known as Sister Morgan, has been a part of the Stierkel this Church family for more than seven years. She became a confirmed member on June 6, 2021. Her baptism was on the 28th of November, 2020, and the same day started her member in training journey. All of these Christian milestones were done by the Reverend Atom Harrison. She was ever present for confirmation class and eager to know more about God's word and promise for her life and the Methodist Church. She attended church very regularly. Sister Morgan Tenya, as a child of God, may have been a couple of years, but I'm called to remember the parable of the workers in the vineyard, which can be found in St. Matthew 20, 1 to 16, where the landowner gave all workers the same wages, those who started early in the morning, those who came at nine, then noon, and then at five. Those who were first to be hired were very unhappy to be given the same wages as those who came last. Then and there, the landowner declares, I choose to give to the, this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. It doesn't matter her tenure in the Lord's vineyard. She was still, she too shall receive the same as you and I, the time, when the time comes. Even before she was confirmed member of the church, she would attend church and the different programs of the church. She would help to sell our lunch and tickets. She would take a rally card and seek donations on behalf of the church. She was ever supportive. She was determined in her pursuit of Christ. She was always on time for worship. Sister Morgan's favorite hymns were Guide Me Out of Great Jehovah. Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? It is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, trust and obey, great is thy faithfulness, and I need thee every hour. Oh, favorite prayer, what a mighty God we serve. Sister Morgan had a zeal and zest for life and her Christian faith. Hence, her favorite scripture was Psalm 121. If she was absent from our congregation for worship, that meant she would be with her daughter on a preaching assignment. She made herself available to the Lord. She was shy and pleasant. As a church, we became aware of her illness when she was absent from church continuously. And we were told that she was experiencing excruciating back pains, which meant she had to be in bed and sit up was difficult. As a church, we brought her for God through prayers. Only for our good. We may not see or understand. 
understand it now, but as time goes on, you will. Poor dearly departed sister, sleep on the way. Sleep and take your rest. Lay your head now on the Savior's breast. We all love you, but it's for sure that Christ loves you best. May light perpetually shine on you as you journey on.
She was the best friend to Jolly, her next door neighbor. And their friendship started when Diane was just four years old. Diane and her mom and Carl were living in San Andreas Bay, but at the age of four, they came to live in Steer Town. Because of this now, Jolly and Diane were inseparable. If you see Diana, you see Jolly. And if you see Jolly, you see Diana. In our Jamaican terms, please excuse me, they were Lati and Chiba, Psyche and Trip. Right? Their relationship saw Diane becoming great friends with Johnny's brother, Shaggy, who treated her like a little sister. Diane and Johnny have been through many ups and downs in their friendship, and they have seen each other through relationships, dramas, and have defended and protected each other, a friendship that lasted all of Diana's life. She met the love of her life at a tender age of 14 and when Yogi was only 17. The man who went on to be her friend, lover, confident, her worst distraction. He was her rhythm and blues, the father of her children and then her husband. Her educational background started at Miss Ida's school at Tapton in the Steertown all age and then the Oshiria Secondary School. Before me, she worked at the Bull Factory. Now with me, it was with me that she had her first experience with motherhood. She always told me that she was happy and eager to give birth to me because she had lost her previous pregnancy. Two years after me, then came my brother, Enroy, we know him as Dada, who is deceased. With us, she became an educator, a nurse, a lawyer, a preacher, a magician, a superwoman to grow us. My mom was the one who kept school with Lakeisha, Bright Bright, Baby, Pia, and myself. And I mean, serious school. She would get us a newspaper we have to read. And I tell you, if you make a mistake, you get a nice piece of awesome. She did not like it when children were disrespectful, so you had to always be respectful. She was the mom and the aunt that played sighting, skipping, Chinese skip, run up and down and baseball with us. I remember one evening, Sunday evening, mommy took us all to Drexel to put Grandpa Ducky and drive. And you know, Drexel at the time had the bamboos over the road. So we were all afraid of ducking. Late in the evening and not a lot of street lights. And mommy said, hey, the last one to reach up, Miss Arifa. Remember, I'm her child and my little brother said, she run left all the way. You want to see us in the night, running after her. It was in the 1990s that she became a big sister again to two younger siblings, Danisha and Pops. She was also now a craft trader and a one-stop beauty salon for tourists. I remember that I used to write her business cards and I got tired. And one evening she come up, she said, you know, I write a business card for me. She said, Mom, I'm tired for her. She said, I love your writing. The tourists, they love your handwriting. They say, pretty. You are the beautiful. They say, you have writing, man. I had no choice, so I write it. And I can still recall because I write it so much. You know, Diane does the best in your braiding on the east side of Sandals Dogs River, over the green fence. You will get hairstyles to fit your face. You will also get your t-shirt, necklace, bracelets, etc. See, Diana just asked for Diane. She was very creative. Every day before any home to beach, my mom prayed. I remember specifically one Tuesday, she was in the And I don't, she don't go beach 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. And let me tell you something. I remember hearing somebody in the room just talking. And when I went to her, I said, Mommy, so what you do? I said, You're interrupting me. You see me, I pray. Lord, do me a big deal. Just 80 dollars more, my God. Just 80 dollars. That's all more, my God. I'm going to be good. I said, you want me $80 at 12 o'clock and you just have a garbage. 
earth will catch the most. So she said, you don't tell me no what God may talk to. Of course, when she go to me, after she said, you have to make 150, but you can't chat to me. You understand? That was how she took it. And when she took it before God, she always worked out. She became a grandmother to four grandchildren whom she adored and loved heartily. Through all the different facets of my mom's life, her love and passion for people and family grew. On April 27, 2019, she tied a knot with my dad right here in this church by the Reverend Horace Hector. Her talk of becoming a child of God started in that same year. She began to ask me questions about the Bible and the Methodist Church. She went on a visit overseas and she came up January 2022 and as she touched up, that I am more baptized. Talk to Auntie Rosie for me, no man. Tell her I said, more baptized. I said, okay, mom. I spoke with Auntie Rosie and Auntie Rosie said I should start the process with her at home. I did. On November 20, 2020, she was baptized. I'm sorry, on November 28, 2020, she was baptized at the Rocks Power Beach in Seventh Bay. On June 6, 2021, she graduated from being a member in training to a conferred member of a Steerton Methodist Church. Her spiritual life grew. Daily, she shared prayers and batteries through her WhatsApp. Her favorite hymns were Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. I need thee every hour. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Trust and obey, for there is no other way. Great is thy faithfulness, and thy the Lord of sea and sky. Her favorite songs were the goodness of God. I know a man who can, and the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. Her favorite choruses were, What a mighty God we serve. And her favorite Bible verse was Psalms 121. I have watched my mom move from strength to strength all through my life. I watched her lose all she had in her business by fire and remain optimistic and hopeful. I watched her grow in faith after losing her son, sister, brother, dad, mom, one behind the other, yet she pressed on. I have watched her develop an attitude of life and prayer and reverence to God with a faith that would not be shaken even in the midst of her suffering and illness. She remains steadfast that God will and will always take care of her. I have watched her undergo rigorous checkups and still testifying to the nurses and doctors that God is good. I have watched my mom in the last two weeks of her life here on earth praise God and thank him for saving her. We took her to the hospital because she was unresponsive. And a hour after at the hospital, she was revived. And the doctor said, your mother is asking for you, you know. I said, okay, and I went in. When I went there, she said, come. Come pray with me. And we pray. We pray. She said, let's say Psalms 121. We said, no, let's say Psalms 23. Because we never knew Psalms 121 fully. I mean, never want her to know. So we said, let's say Psalms 123. And so we said Psalms 123. And she said, yes, no. Let's say Psalms 121 now. And when I made a mistake, she said, mm-mm. And so, start back over. And she led me word for word through Psalms 121. And when she got, she started shouting, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. She just started to just worship. And after a few minutes, she said, All right, where you going? Oh, I said, Okay, come on, to sleep. I went out to get my dad and he came back. All this I have watched and observed bear witness to the goodness of God. And so during this, I rejoice because scripture tells me that weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. My dad, my kids, my family and I, we are not mourning as those who are without hope. I will never forget that her life was built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Today, I lay the body which once hosts my mom's spirit to rest. 
but never her. She will be in a part of me because through her, I have learned that I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come. My help comes from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. He will not let my foot be moved. He who keeps me will not slumber. He who keeps Israel neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade at my right hand. The sun shall not strike me by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep me from all evil. He will keep my life. The Lord will keep me in my going out and my coming from this time unto forevermore. Amen. My mother, sleep on and take your rest. Lay your head now upon my Savior's breast. I love you, but for sure Christ loves you best. May your soul rest in peace and the light of the world shine on you.
giver of all good gifts. We praise and glorify your name that in this service of thanksgiving you are Lord. The Lord here, your Lord outside, your Lord everywhere. We give you thanks for the life of Sister Diane. That she came to know you as Lord and Savior. And so Lord, we have donated this offering in memory of her. We ask the God that it be used for the extension of your kingdom here on earth. That your name be glorified and honored in all corners of the earth. Accept the praise we bring. In Jesus' name.
Psalm 90, 1 to 12, to be read by this 17, to be followed by the epistle from Revelation 21, 1 to 7, by Khalid Lawrence, and then the gospel from John 14, by Ariana Marie. We will go in that order. Destiny first, Khalid second, Ariana. Thank you. 
for those of us who have good memories, and I'm sorry to lose mind, uh, for us to think back perhaps as to where we were when um, COVID-19 um, came to Jamaica and what we were engaged in. And of course, this was in 2020. And I can recall that we had just completed a board meeting at Dorcaster High School when the message came to the principal that school must be closed. And what a challenge it was for all of us as we went through that period. And of course, everything was locked down. And then later on in the year, we started to have limited coming together. And among the things that I can recall in terms of that limited coming together was when we started back services in our churches. And in that period of time, I was challenged um, to go and to perform the sacrament of holy baptism during COVID. Um, challenging. Uh, it is, of course, a little bit of a difficulty to go and baptize somebody without getting up close and personal. And that's the kind of situation that we were in when Sister Beverly um, got baptized in November 2020. And at the end of that, and I'm not too sure if that is the reason why um, the family, Latoya and the family, selected that in that way some earlier um, during the time we were taking the communion. Because at the end of that baptismal um, experience, we sang that hymn. Happy day, oh happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me So um, they decided that they want to honor his memory 
and crunch out all the first ones to play a business sort of on the radio. Um, so, what was just right share this disciple? Uh, that he is now referring to when he says, I have told you these things so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be full. And it is important then if we are going to identify with this gift that Jesus Christ is given because he said, I have told you these things so that my joy, so that it is identifying that joy is a gift from Jesus Christ. Joy is not something that we give ourselves. Joy is a gift that comes from Jesus Christ. And he says, I have told you these things so that my joy might be in you. And here it is that Jesus Christ, in a real sense, was preparing his disciples for his funeral. So we don't have any sermon that Jesus Christ preached at a funeral because everybody who died at him came in contact with him brought him back to life again. So there's no real um, funeral service, but there is a funeral program so to speak, that he would share as he was preparing his disciples for his death. It is found from St. John chapter 13 through to 16. And in those passages, Jesus Christ was preparing his disciples for his death and burial. And he was indicating to them that when that time comes, when his um, funeral service is going to be um, prepared and so on. There are certain things that he is expecting of them. And it is important for the family to identify with this as well. So in St. John 13 through 16, reminiscent of St. Matthew 5, 6, and 7 in terms of the Sermon on the Mount, he was preparing himself for preparing himself to be a part of the kingdom of God. But in St. John, 13 through 16, he's preparing his disciples for what they were to be doing after his death. Having become a part of the kingdom of God, this is what is expected of you. And among the things that he was indicating to them, which is important for family and for all of us who are grieving over the death of Sister Beverly today, Jesus Christ has promised him that because of our relationship that we have with him, having developed this relationship as the disciples did, he's now saying to them, in St. John chapter 13, he would be encouraging them that because of that relationship, whatever they ask God for will be granted to them. Whatever they ask God for will be granted to them. I, I am pretty confident today that Jesus Christ never made promises that he would not keep. And within that context, for the family members today, it is important for you to recognize that believing in Jesus Christ has its privileges because when we believe in Jesus Christ, we can go to the Father in his name and ask him for the things that we need and Jesus Christ has promised it will be done for us. So, when we jump across St. John chapter 14 in the past that was read, here it is right now saying, when you are planning my funeral, when you are uh, identified with my passing, just let your heart be troubled. When you are in the process of preparing for my burial, do not allow grief to overcome you. Believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, in that moment when you are preparing for burial, trust God. Trust God. And remember the things that you have experienced and that I have taught. And within that context, he was really sharing disciples. Remember those things that you would have heard. And among the things that you would have, they would have heard is what he would share when he attended the post, if you will, funeral of Lazarus. And he declared to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. It is that which, if you recall those words, those teachings of Christ, the Latoya and family, then Jesus Christ says, let not your heart 
disciple. Believe in God, believe in me. Because I don't make the promises that I'm not going to keep. When Beverly Newton Morgan dies, believing in Jesus Christ, she will experience resurrection. So let not your heart be troubled. Because she is going to be raised. And Jesus Christ is now promising us what he has prepared for her. Because in my father's house, there are many rooms, many dwelling places, uh, many mansions, some people would. Whatever the scripture we want to put to the dwelling place that Jesus Christ is preparing, she is indicating to us, let not your heart be troubled because I am preparing a place of heaven. There is a place that is ready for memory. There is one right now he bears that for him it is one of the greatest things that he has because uh, in terms of the promise because when he looks at that passage and he's thinking about the room, then he's looking at it above the door of that room and above the door of that room, his name is written there. So the room that Jesus Christ has gone to prepare for Beverly, there's a sign over it. Beverly, Newton Morgan, that's your room. So let not your heart be troubled. Trust God. Trust Jesus. And then Jesus Christ would continue to share with them in that passage that in order for you to recognize that I am able to do for you what no one else can do, remember, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. Family, friends, church members, this is the reason why we can have joy. Because we know that Sister Beverly believed in Jesus. She accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And so because she accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, the promise of Jesus Christ will be fulfilled. She will come into the presence of the Father through her belief in Jesus Christ. And listen to what the psalmist in Psalm 16 says in verse 11. In his presence, there is a fullness of joy. So for Beverly, there will be fullness of joy as she now is in the presence of our Savior Jesus Christ. However, in the presence of her death, it brings grief. And how can we experience joy when we are grieving? Which is where the passage in St. John chapter 15 and verse 11 comes in. Because Jesus Christ is now declaring, I have told you these things so that my joy might be in you. And your joy will be full. What is he telling us today? He's telling us that if we trust God, we can know that Beverly Newton Morgan will rise again from the dead. She will experience the presence of God. And Jesus Christ is saying, I have told you this so that my joy can be in you. So when we know, when we have this confidence that Beverly is in the presence of God, that Beverly is being restored into the presence of God, then we can have the joy of Jesus Christ in us. In Nehemiah chapter 8, Nehemiah chapter 8, the joy of the Lord is my expression. So for all of us here today, as we grieve, as we mourn, the pastor of Beverly, and I know it has very much sadness to members of the family, to members of the church family. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I was a little bit upset with Latoya about is that myself and Latoya and um, Sister Polly went visiting, and her mother was sick, and Sister Latoya was coming from Latoya. Um, because her mother desire was that she don't want anybody to see her as she is. Much by this name. But the point I'm making here is that no matter what condition we're in, it is important for us to recognize that
that the greatest gift that we can give to others is the gift of all persons. The gift of all persons. It is part of the reason why I'm hoping you are here today. Because you want to give the family the gift of your presence. And the gift of all presence is what brings you all. So in St. John chapter 11, Jesus Christ could have remained where he was. But he wanted to give Martha and Mary and the Indian community the gift of his presence. I want to try the difference that it has made to the family members. Today, Sister Latoya, we did not get to see Sister Morgan and perhaps one of the challenges that I have with COVID is that COVID experience is still affecting those of us who want to do pastoral work. Yes. So now to go and visit a sick in the hospital is a real challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for me, it is the biggest pain that I've been getting since COVID comes in because you can't just go to hospital and visit everybody else in life these days. So you can't give them the joy of your presence as you would like to. But today, as we come to share, we are sharing with the living. And we want those who are the survivors of Sister Beverly to know that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. So then, I want to close by pointing you to what Jesus Christ would have shared with the disciples later on. Uh, he started in chapter 14 and he would climax it in chapter 16. And there he is promising that in your grief, in your moment when you are having pain and anguish because, in, in the case of the disciples, because of Jesus' death, in the case of the family, because of Sister Beverly's death, Jesus Christ is promising, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will give you the comforter, the Holy Spirit. And it is that which will help you give you joy. In St. John chapter 14, he will declare that he will give us the comforter, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, among the things that the Holy Spirit will do, is to help us to remember the things that Jesus Christ taught. So, today, the Holy Spirit will be helping you to remember that Jesus Christ is teaching, let not your heart be troubled. Believe God, believe Jesus. Today, the Holy Spirit is there to give you strength, to give you comfort. And so my own hope and prayer for all family members is that you will allow God's Spirit to be a part of your life. That's what Jesus Christ wants to do today. He wants to give you the gift of His presence through the Holy Spirit. And so my prayer and my hope is that you will experience God's Spirit right now where you are to give you the gift of His presence to remind you that when Jesus Christ is with us nothing can be against us that when Jesus Christ has accepted us in His presence nothing can separate us from His love not even death to remind you that when Jesus Christ is a part of our lives, then we can have the assurance that death is not the end of those who trust in Him. So, in closing, may I hope and pray that all of us here today have a relationship with Jesus. Because you see, it is our relationship with Jesus that will determine how we approach death. Because when we have a relationship with Jesus, then we can identify what Paul would be declaring to the church members in Thessalonica when he declares that uh, we do not mourn as people without hope. And what is that hope? The hope is that we get from the promise of Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. And because it's a Beverly Newton Morgan believes in him, even though she died, yet she will live again. Amen. Because he lives, 
I think all that the nights are long and the pillows are old. Me to them there and grant them their peace. So God, we pray that even in the experience of death, they will be drawn closer to you. You can understand your power and discern where you are taking them. Respond to your love and to your peace. And so family, may the peace that passes all understanding guide your hearts and your minds with the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ, our Savior and the Lord of Amen. Amen. Then one has to be willing to learn. And so we thank God today for Otoya. And we give thanks for the memory of our mother. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in the own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanks to you, O Christ, our Lord and God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. And I now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God and Comforter. Who bears witness within us of our acceptance to the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance? All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship with you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Be blessed. Your name for memory who we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing the life has brought to others and for our service to her generation according to the will and very happy remembrance of her life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness which of following her all the days of her life. And now that uh, we bless you for your mercy and goodness which have followed her all the days of her life. And now that the world has overcome the sharpness of death. We ask you to receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us to all who have lived and served you faithfully for the fullness of your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
with your son for our redemption, we commend our sister Beverly for your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her, and let perpetual life shine upon her. The Lord's prayer. We sing.
Possibly, no. Every time. Real, man. Every time. Every year. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every Yeah. Switch it, 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 switch
Next man, next man. Next man. Yeah, yeah, pressure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But pressure. Yeah, so my is Yeah, the old war. Thank you. 
from heaven saying unto me, from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so in the spirit, for their rest from their labors. Let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all comfort, raise us up, we pray, from death of sin to the new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. Grant to the bereaved consolation, and faith in this time of distress and trial. The blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people, and steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your will. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. We're going to go back to the order of service as the workmen will know the covering up. So, um, workmen, um, you're standing on the, you're standing on the thing on the here. Chip. 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 Let's sing as we the workmen do their job. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh Lord my God. When I stay right, Mr. Kali, you soon can go back. Stay this. That's why, that's why, that's why. Get us ready. What are you putting in the car? And yeah. And
Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these robed in white? Where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore.